Today, I, I just want to share something that's been on my heart lately, these past few months. Uh, and I, I was reminded of this story that I, I might have told years ago to you guys. But I, I was on my way to meet Carolina. I was on this flight. And I, I was going from Bogota to Atlanta, and we were going to meet. And, and then I forget we were going to go, like Louisiana or something. So I'm on this flight, and I, I have a spiritual gift, uh, I think, and it's that I can fall asleep automatically, no matter what. Uh, and so that's what I do. I, I go on the plane, and before it even takes off, I'm already falling asleep. So I, I'm, I'm getting ready for this moment. I'm already kind of like getting cozy in the plane. And then I see this lady come in, and I see she's very fidgety, and, and she just looks very nervous. So, so I start praying real quick, Father, please don't send her beside me because it's going to be terrible. And so I, I've heard it before, you know, you want to make God laugh, you know, tell him your plans or something like that. So I think I made him laugh at that point because she sat right beside me, and she looked at me, and she tells me, this is my first time flying. Uh, so I look at her, I'm like, oh, you're fine. I mean, one out of every 10 falls, but one just fell. And so you're fine. We're, uh, so she's like, what? I'm like, no, I'm just kidding. And so, but I could tell that she wanted to keep talking with me. And I wanted to, I wanted to sleep. And so I, I found out one thing. If you tell people that you're like a, a, a spirit-filled preacher that believes in Jesus is coming, they kind of don't want to talk to you anymore. So that's what I, so she asked me, hey, what do, uh, what do you do? I'm like, I, I am a preacher of the Holy Ghost, and I believe that the trumpet will sound soon, and Jesus is coming for his trumpet. And she looked at me, and she's like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. So I'm like, okay, and I fall asleep. And then we're in the middle of the flight, and the inevitable happens, and it's turbulence. You know, when you're on a flight, if you've ever been on a flight, usually you'll hit like an atmospheric change or something, and then the flight will start to move a little bit. So it starts to move, and she, she, she's, like, very nervous. So she grabs my leg and starts to shake it. So I'm like, excuse me, not today, devil. Uh, and so I look at her, I'm like, excuse me, like, what happened? And she's like, the, the flight is shaking. The flight is moving. I'm like, well, yeah, well, what do you want me to do? So she looks at me, and she's like, well, aren't you a preacher? Well, do, do something spiritual. So I look at her, and so I stand up, and I, and I take an offering. Hey, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm like, so seat number 16D, you know, come over. No. Uh, we pray and everything. But what, the, the whole reason why I tell this story is because I, I was reminded of this the other day, that in life, you know, John 16, Jesus said, you know, in this life you will have problems. In this world you will have problems. But take heart because I have overcome this world. And something I've realized about flights in general and about life is that there might be turbulence, but it doesn't change the destination. That even though the flight might move, your destination is still the same. I've never heard of pilots saying, sorry, the flight shook, we're going back, you know, because it never happens. And the best thing about our life as Christians is that who's in charge of our life, you know, never loses a battle. He's faithful to the end. Nothing can separate you from the love of God, right? He is your shepherd. You will not lack for anything. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Like, and this, this is who's piloting your life if you will. And so when we go through turbulence sometimes in life, and I'm sure everyone here can probably stand up and, and talk about their, their turbulent moments of life, or maybe you're going through moments in, the, in, in these past few days or past few months where stuff is not right. And I want to tell you today that turbulence does not change your destination, that what God has promised in his word will come to pass. Heaven and earth will pass away but his word will remain. So it's going to come to a point where there's like this collision that's going to happen with reality and the word, and my money is on the word of God. That what he has promised, what he has spoken, what he has said over your life, that's what's going to come out on top. It's not sickness that's going to win. It's not adversity that's going to win. It's not a, a recession and an economy that's going to win. It's our God. He, he is more than the cause and has made us more than the conquerors in Christ Jesus. 
But with that, I want to give you three, three points of, of what to do when you're going through turbulent moments. Uh, because it's not just, you know, wait and, and just see what happens and it is what it is type of mentality, you know, a nonchalant mentality. No, no, we, we got to fill ourselves with the word of God. It, it fill ourselves with faith. It, and there's three basic points that I'd like to share with you tonight in the five minutes that Rob has given me. Uh, and so four minutes, uh, see, I, I'm so sorry. I mentioned the rapture too many times. Was it, was it that? It was that. So uh, the, the, the first point is acquire wisdom. Everyone say that with me, acquire wisdom. Well, one thing I, I, I've noticed is that sometimes uh, the, the more wisdom that you have, the less miracles you will need. And what I mean by that is the, the miracles, the, 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 like the save me miracles, right? The, the bail me out miracles. When you are wise, you don't need that many bail me out miracles. So uh, let's see what the word of God says real quick. Joshua 1.8, it says, this book of the law, the Bible, the word of God shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that it is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have a good success. So now there's two things that the Word of God promises here, that you, you, your way will be prosperous, and two, that you will have good success. Now I'm sure this is something that we all want for our life, that we want to be prosperous, and we also want to have good success. But where's the wisdom behind all this? It's not just something that's going to happen. It says, for those that meditate on the Word of God day and day and night that you're impregnating yourself that you that you're receiving his word that you're receiving his wisdom constantly to a point where you live out a life that is wise that makes it prosperous that makes it successful because of the wisdom of God that is in you it's, it, think about uh, Solomon real quick when, when Solomon asked for wisdom he got everything else Solomon knew something about this and is if i can just have wisdom then all the other stuff that I might pray about, that I might want, that I might ask, that I might need, all those things come together because I am wiser. Uh, and, and this applies in many areas of your life. For example, with Carolina, my, my beautiful wife, we've been together for 12 years, including dating, and we've been married almost seven years. So that is pretty crazy. But our first year of marriage wasn't the the greatest year of marriage. So, you know, they, 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 they tell you sometimes, people would ask us, are you still in your honeymoon stage? And I'm like, what? we were like, what is that? Because like this year has been rough. Like it's gotten better to the point where now maybe it's a more of a honeymoon stage than it was when, our, when we first got married. There was just so many differences. We were mad all the time. I remember one night I was so mad. I wanted to teach her a lesson. So I told her tonight, I'm sleeping on the couch. You're missing out on all of this. Like, bye. Like, I mean, it, it, that was me punishing her instead of saying, no, you go to the couch. What? Like, it just, so I'm like, I'm taking myself to the couch so you don't have to send me. Uh, and, and, and we were fighting all the time. And, and to be honest, I, I was praying to God. I'm like, God, what is wrong with our marriage? Like, we're good Christians. We, we do what we're supposed to do, but we fight all the time. That's so why I, I pray to God. I'm like, God, change her, right? Like, you know, <laughs> God, like, you either come down or if you want, I can send her to you. But I need you to do something. And, and I, I would love to tell you that, you know, an angel came and kind of gave directions to Carolina. I was like, look, listen, this is how you're supposed to act. This is how you're supposed to act. But none of that, like that miraculous thing didn't happen. What did happen, though, was someone gave us a book called The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, I think. We started reading Acquiring Wisdom. And I know, and for those of you that might not know what that is, it, apparently there's five love languages. Uh, you know, there's physical touch, words of affirmation, there's uh, quality time, there's gifts, and then there's acts of service. Now, my, uh, my love languages are gifts and, and words of affirmation and physical touch. Like, I love kissing my wife. I, I, I love her to tell me I'm a good kisser and then give me Legos right after kissing. Like, <laughs> that to me is like the, mo the best expression of love for me. But guess what her love languages are? Not that. 
Uh, her love languages are uh, uh, spending time together, quality time, and acts of service. And that's one thing I didn't know. And so I started realizing that she wasn't mad because I wasn't telling her I loved her because I'm great at that. I would wake up and I'm like, baby, like you're the reason I smile today. You're the, the sun came up and reminded me of your beauty. Like all of that. And she's mad because I'm like all like a, this big poet with the dishes still dirty, right? So like she's telling me, okay, Van Gogh or whatever, like Van Gogh and clean the laundry. But now, like now when I see laundry that's to be done or when I see dirty dishes, I get super excited because I know, I know it's gonna be a great night. So I'm like, baby, look, look, look at me washing it. I love you. Like I'm putting extra, extra softener tonight. Like is it, but what, what happened, what happened in our marriage? We acquired wisdom. When you acquire wisdom, then your way will be successful. You will be prosperous. Well, what does the word of God say? It says in Proverbs chapter one, verse five, it says a wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. So uh, being wise is not having studied. Being wise is understanding that you still need to acquire more wisdom. Uh, it, uh, be, being wise is not just you went to college or you went to school or you did this. Being wise is understanding that I constantly need to keep increase my learning, which is what Proverbs 1, 5 says. What, what does Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 to 16 say? It says, happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. And, and look at what the Bible says about wisdom. It says, for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. Look what Proverbs chapter four, verses five to nine says. It says, get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all your getting, get understanding. I love that. Because life, it's, it's a constant acquisition of stuff all the time. Like you're, you're acquiring either life experience or you're buying stuff or it's all these things. And the Word of God acknowledges that and it says, and in all that you're getting and in all your shopping lists and all those things, get wisdom and get understand, get smarter. It's kind of like when I was a kid and I didn't know how to swim, I'd always be scared of swimming pools. Because obviously, if you can't swim, your biggest nemesis is water, right? Like, because it can drown you because you don't know how to swim. Now, I could just stand in the pool and be like, God, just remove everything here that wants to drown me. And if he did that way, it would be a terrible summer because it'd just be this big hole where there used to be water. But instead of asking God to remove my problem, I need to acquire wisdom and ask God to lead me into wisdom so that what used to sink me or what used to be a problem now doesn't bother me anymore. It kind of reminds me of Psalms 23 when it says, you prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. It's so interesting to see that God didn't remove the enemies in order to prepare the table. It shows me that you can acquire wisdom that you can acquire faith in the word of God to a point where what used to be your enemies and what used to drown you and what used to attack you, now it that doesn't do the same thing, doesn't do the same damage. Why? Because you outgrew the problem. There are some problems that might not change, but what's required to change is you. There are some problems that might not change, but the way to beat them is just to outgrow them to a point where we've been at, we used to have financial difficulties and we're all the time praying to God, you know, God, send the check, send the text, send the whatever, you know, I, when I see the Powerball go over a billion, I always ask God, I don't know about you, but I'm like, God, you know, do you want to lead me with a number? Uh, you know, like, 
do you want to show me? Because I know you can do it. I, I, need you, I want you to do it again and all these things. But I, I've noticed that past or previous economical problems aren't a problem anymore. And it's not because we won the lottery. It's because we grew. It's because we started being more mature with how we handled our finances. It's because we, we, we started acquiring wisdom. Say that with me. Acquire wisdom. Oh, when we move, we recently moved back full time to Colombia, and actually in January, I started this weight loss journey because stuff started to happen where I kind of let myself go. It was a good life. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but Carolina didn't want to take pictures with me anymore. She said, she started saying stuff like, "You don't fit in the phone," and you know, stuff. so. So I, I started this weight loss journey. I'm like, okay, I'm, we're going to start eating better. Uh, but then, you know, moving back to Colombia and security problems and stuff like that, it's not crazy, but, you know, you, uh, you kind of see stuff in the news. I saw a shirt that said that uh, fat people are harder to kidnap. And so I, I tell Carolina, you know, there's wisdom in this. I mean, listen, no, that, that's just a, a, a terrible joke, but... When you're going through turbulent problem, uh, times in life, uh, number one, acquire wisdom. Uh, but number two, because uh, there's more than just acquiring wisdom, you know, because if, if, it, if it's only about what you acquire, then you get the glory, right? If it's only about what you study and how you grow and how you work, it, 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 our, our life is not about what we can do. It's about what we see God do through our lives. And, and that's the true testimony of, of how God has kept us, of how God, you know, has protected us, of how God has guided us and led us into those things that he's prepared for us. So number two, uh, number one, acquire wisdom, but number two, believe for favor. Now, even when you're going through turbulent times, uh, the, the word of God says that the just will live by faith. It's a lifestyle of continually believing of, uh, for God to do things, of continually believing in God and continually believing that who God says he is is true in my life. Understanding that if he promised it, that that's what I'm contending for, that I'm not letting go because I'm feeling different. I'm not letting go because I can't can't see it. I walk by faith and not by sight. Believe in the favor of God in your life. It's kind of like the, the story of Joseph. I don't know if you remember this story, but he, I mean, he kind of had some bad luck. He had one dream, right? And like that one dream propelled him into all these problems where his brothers sold him into slavery. And, and then, you know, the slave traders sold him to Potiphar's house. And then Potiphar's wife got crazy. And so they sent him to jail. But one thing I noticed is how inevitable it was for Joseph to always rise back to the top. And no matter where he was, in Potiphar's house, always rose back to the top. In jail, rose back to the top. It was inevitable. And the other day, you know, we have a daughter now, Amanda, and I think she's back there. She saw the, like, the little park back there, and she went crazy. So she's there. She, we're trying to invite her to church, so pray with us. But she likes the park right now. She's one year old. One year old. And while I was playing with her, she's got like these ping pong balls. And we're in the bath. And we push the, one of our games that we do is we push the ball down and we let it go and then it goes back up and she just loves it because she's one. And so it's just these ping pongs. But I was reminded that that's kind of what it is in our life. That the reason why you rise to the top, the reason why a ping pong rises to the top is because what is inside the ping pong, not because what's around the ping pong. It's, it's the air, it's less dense than the water, so it'll rise back up. It's the same in our Christian life, that the reason why we rise back to the top, the reason why we become more than conquerors in Christ Jesus is because of who lives inside of us. It's Jesus. It's the conqueror. It's, it's the undefeated one who lives inside of us. And so no matter what is happening in our life, you know, the, the outcome of our life does not depend on what is happening around us. The outcome of life depends on who lives inside of us. And if Jesus lives inside of you, it's like Joseph's life. It's inevitable to rise back to the top. But then what we have to do in these moments is believe in God. It's believe and hold on to that profession of our faith that we, you know, who spoke it, you know, is able to perform it, that, that he's 
a God that doesn't just say stuff and then lets it happen. He's a God that if he said it, it will happen in our lifetime. And there's no reason to find out exactly how. You know, when God created the heavens and the earth, he said, let there be light. That's all he said. He didn't say, let there be electrons, neutrons, protons, and then let there be electrons and covalent bonds, and, and let there be all these like things and scientific stuff that I don't even know. What did he say? Let there be light. And then everything necessary for there to be light was made. And that's what God says. God, God's not saying, you know, by his stripes you will be healed. And then he tells you, and it'll be this way, it'll be that way. Anything that's necessary for his word to be true will be true. And that's the same pattern in, in our life. So when I tell you to believe for the favor of God, I'm telling you to believe in God, that God is faithful, that he never lets you go. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. It really says, in Romans it says, there's no angels, no demons, no mountains, no valleys. There is nothing that can separate you. He's holding you with this powerful hand. I, 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 I love it because Amanda... Our daughter, they're so, like now, I, I remember when I was a kid, my dad would always preach about us. And so I, I would always say, when I'm a dad, I will never talk about my daughter. So the other day with Amanda, uh, we were walking and, and she grabs, she likes to grab on to, to my finger. So, we, you know, we grab, she grabs on and stuff. But what she doesn't realize is that I'm not only letting her grab my finger, I'm grabbing her hand and she grabs my finger. So whenever she falls, she, like, she, she thinks she's grabbing on, but what she doesn't realize is that I'm grabbing on to her, and that's why she will never fall. I've heard it said this way, faith is your grasp on God, but grace is God's grasp on you. That while you walk through life, God's not expecting you to be perfect. God's not expecting you to know the whole Bible. And if you don't, well, I mean, that's, that's on you. You have all this time on Netflix. Why not pray or whatever, you know? It's, I mean, there is something to be said about how much time we spend, but that's a different message. But my point is when you start to know who God is, it's what Paul would say, that I consider it all trash compared to getting to know him and the power of his resurrection. That when you know God, then you know, okay, it's good. I don't know how. I don't know what steps are going to be taken. I don't know where this route is taking me, but I know that God is still the pilot. And I know that my destination hasn't changed. So I'm going to believe in God. One of the problems about believing in God, or one of the problems we have in believing in God, is that it's hard to believe in someone you don't know. You know, they, they teach us when we're kids. They teach us, you know, hey, you know, don't, don't receive candy from strangers. You know, if you don't know him, you know, don't believe him. And, and then we come to church and, you know, people tell you, hey, believe in God. But if you don't spend time with him, if you don't spend time in his presence, you don't get to know him. It's hard to believe in someone you don't know. But when you know him, it, the, the word of God says, those that know their God will do exploits. That there is things that God wants to do through your life, but he needs you as part of the equation. Spend time in his presence. Spend time searching for his face. You know, spend time getting to know God at a more intimate level. Believe Believing for more, believing that God has things in store that it just won't even make sense in your life. But you know that he is a good God. You know what he has promised and he's able to perform it. You know that there is nothing impossible for those that believe. You know that what's impossible for man is still possible for God. And walk that life, act that life, speak that life. Number one, acquire wisdom. Number two, believe in the favor of God. Luke chapter 2, verse 52 says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. So you can increase in this, just like Jesus. You can grow in these things. You can increase it and believe for more favor and, and just start confessing. It's not positive confession. It's just confessing his word. It just happens to be positive, you know. But it's not just, I'm going to fake it till I make it. No, I, I've, come to a, I've come to realize that the more I know him, it's just in me now. That I, I, I'm, I'm walking in a place and I know I'm blessed because I have him. You know, I'm walking into situations. We move into 
a different country. And I know I'm blessed. And I know I'm taken care of because God is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And because he shepherds my life, I will not lack for anything. I do not lack for opportunity. I do not lack for anything that God has for me. He's a good shepherd. And I will not be lacking for stuff. And number three. Number one is acquire wisdom. Number two is believe for favor. And number three is give consistently. And I know this is kind of like, you know, just a random one. Because you know, the first two, you're like, okay, but okay, now he's going to get into our wallets. And I'm not trying to get into anyone's wallet. But what I do want is for the, the word to apply to your life. And it says in Proverbs 11:24, it says, There is one who scatters yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right but it leads to poverty. Now look what the message translation says. It says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger, and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. I, I, I've come to learn with Carolina the, the power of, of being generous. And obviously being led by the Spirit. There are times where God's going to lead you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, you know, to be a good steward of your money and save and stuff like that. But there's other moments where uh, the Holy Spirit will lead you to be more generous than you kind of want to be. You know, I remember when we, what was it, like three, four years ago while we were working at Amazon, we were going through some financial stuff. And so in, in the meantime, while stuff... It happened. We just started. I just started working at this warehouse, and they gave us a bonus, and it was a five hundred dollar bonus, and we were so happy. But Carolina, at that time, had been praying a dangerous prayer, uh, and, and the dangerous prayer was the following: "Was God, what do you want us to do with this money?" And the reason why it's dangerous is because God is far more generous than I am. And so, I, like, I knew if we ask him, well, obviously, he's just going to have us throw it around everywhere. Uh, but we got bills, right? Like, I mean, we got stuff. God doesn't know because he's already paved his earth, like his heavens with gold. Uh, but but so, so anyway, so we're, we're led by Carolina uh, to, to sow it, to sow it into someone's life. And at that point, I'm like, Lord Jesus, like, you're going to have to move because, you know, we kind of needed that. But t today's a day, three, four years later, where we've noticed that our world has gotten larger and larger because there's a spiritual law that's put into effect in our life uh, of giving consistently. And, and when you're going through turbulent moments, it's one of, those, one of those times where you can make that bold step of faith to say, I'm not going to believe in what the economy says. I'm still going to believe in what God says. And I, I, what was it? It was a couple of years ago. I was in, I'll finish with this. I was in this mall and I was eating alone. And I had just gotten paid. And in Colombia, they would pay me like in cash. And so I had this like wad of bills and I, and I had them in my pocket. And that's just a good feeling. I mean, I know today there's no more cash or whatever, but how many remember, you know, those times where you just had a big wad of cash right here, kind of like made you walk a little bit different, but but it just felt good. Like, you just, you, so I walked in, and I was so happy because I got paid. I'm like, you know, I'm going to, I, I, I'm going to eat a burger. So I'm going to bless myself. So I sat there, and I, I ordered this burger. I'm eating it. It's, it's, it's thick. Not the burger, like the, the, the wad, right? The water bills. I'm just happy. And I happened to catch a conversation beside me. Uh, and so, I, I mean, I'm, I, I don't like to eavesdrop or anything, but I was listening to what they were saying. And, <laughs> and, and this mom was having this conversation with her kid and basically was telling him, listen, you, know, you can only invite 10, ki 10 of your friends to your party. And, and he would respond, but mom, but I have like 15 friends. Like, uh, I, I can't just invite 10. So I started to realize what the situation was. The mom didn't want to tell the kid that they didn't have the money for all these kids. But the kid didn't understand. So the kid would always, you know, talk back and, and say, but I, what about Timmy? You know, what about Carlos? What about like all these friends? And the mom was like, no, but we can just order one piece of pizza, stuff like that. And then I knew it. I started feeling a little warm here. So, so I'm like, you know, Satan, take your hands off of my money. You know, this is, this is for the Lord's work and my burger. Two things. And I knew, I knew. I don't know if you've ever felt that tug, you know, that the Holy Spirit is just telling you. Like, it's right there. 
So, uh, so I'm like, Holy Spirit, at least let me finish my burger. So I did. Okay, and in my mind, I'm like, hopefully by the time I finish my burger, they leave. And I'm like, well, I tried. I was just hungry, you know. But they were there. And so, and so before I go talk to them, I pray. I'm like, Father, just give the mom wisdom. You know, teach her how to cut those pizzas, you know, those slices of pizza just smaller. So then, you know, everyone gets to be invited, you know. Like, maybe that's what they need. But no, I still felt the tug. So I, I go and I, I'm like, listen, uh, so I'm not, I'm not one to eavesdrop, but I've been listening to your conversation for the past 30 minutes. Uh, and I feel this is what the Lord has told me to do. And I, I gave him the money. And, and then I go and cry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then I go and the mom started to cry. And it was this whole thing. It was beautiful. I still remember it to this day. I, 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 the, 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 uh, the mall was called Atlantis. Like, I remember it. I was there. Uh, and so, anyway, I, I would like to tell you that, you know, after then, the kid became the next Billy Graham or something. I have no idea what happened to their life. But I know what, ha what has happened in our life. And, and, and it just keeps increasing. The, the, the world, and I'm not just saying uh, money-wise. I'm saying in general, opportunities, favor, relationships, joy. has our, our world has increased. And what used to be a problem is not a problem anymore because we've grown. But our world has grown as well. And so when you are going through turbulent times, when you're on this flight of life and you, you know, you're hitting these, these rough moments where you, you're, you're shaking up a little bit, shaking up a little bit, just remember these things. Remember, one, who's with you, that your destination is not changing because of the problems that are around you. But in the meantime, acquire wisdom. Uh, through it all, believe in the favor of God and believe for favor in your life. Believe that you are a child of God. Really, I'm not just saying buy into it. Just find out for yourself and know how blessed you really are because of who lives inside of you. His life goes in your body like he lives in you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And then through it all, be obedient to his word. Be obedient to his leading. and Give consistently. It's what the word of God says. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Let me finish with one more story just because uh, Pastor Rob gave me five more minutes. It's in the green still. Uh, <laughs> I was with this minister, and we were in, in a city called Santa Marta in Colombia. And we were in the taxi, and he asked me to translate for him and ask the taxi driver how much the taxi driver makes. So it was kind of weird. I'm like, okay. So I, like, I asked him. I was like, hey, he wants to know how much you make like a month. So he tells me. So I tell him. I'm like, okay. And then, and then we get off of the, the taxi, and then this minister turns around and, and gives me some money to, and tells me to give it to the taxi uh, driver. And so I, I grab it, and like it's a couple of steps, so I'm counting it real quick. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 this is too much. And I, I give it back to the minister. He's like, no, no, this is too much. Like, this is like five times what he makes in a month. And, and so the minister kind of like didn't understand. He's like, well, no, 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 just give it to him. Like, that's what the Lord says. I'm like, no, but see, if you give it to him, it's, it's not going to help him. It's actually going to hurt him because there is such a thing as too much blessing. You know, I'm trying to correct him. And so he gets kind of aggravated at me. He's like, well, no, 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 this is what the Lord is saying. Just give it to him. So I give it to the taxi driver. He sees how much it is. He starts to cry. He tells us the story about what, what he's believing and stuff. And then he turns around and he's like, listen, if you guys need to go anywhere else, just let me know. I'm like, well, obviously, because with what you've been paid, you can take me anywhere in this world right now. And I was very aggravated. So I'm, I'm walking with this guy, and I think he just feels how aggravated I am at this whole, how, how generous he was. I just can't believe, like, you know, the nerve. Uh, and, and so he looks at me, and he says, John David, you know, uh, sometimes people wonder uh, and they question, you know, why I have too much. And he tells me, it's because I give too much. It's just, it's just a spiritual law. And he's not, you know, I, I'm not telling you. I'm just, I'm just sharing this because it really just changed the way I saw things. That, you know, sometimes you're, you're, you're trying to work your way towards things that God has prepared for you. And all God wants is your heart and your obedience. 
And God wants those little demonstrations of obedience throughout your life, whether it is, you know, uh, an act of generosity, you know, an act of faith, uh, an act of obedience, an act of service. But it's telling God, listen, like, I I believe more in you than I do my bank account, than I do the news, than than I believe in Facebook. I believe in you. And it's all those little things that have added up to our life, to to the moment we are now, where there's things that we're believing for. We'll be in the Amazon jungle in two weeks, and we'll have a couple of crusades down there. And there's just stuff that you're believing for, but it's it'll be impossible for me to say that that this is just hard being a missionary because it it can't be that hard when you have God in your life. You know, it's just one of those things where surely goodness and mercy have followed us all the days of my life. It's what the word of God says. We've seen the goodness of God in the land of the living. And I believe the same for you.